So hi there, I'm Caroline Fabrigas. I'm the CEO of a company called Scent Marketing Inc. and Scent Fluence, which is an aroma design studio. And that's where I am this evening at the Scent Fluence Aroma Design Studio in Scarsdale Village. And I'm so excited to have started a new series called Scent Fluence Sit Downs. And in our series, we actually celebrate um, influencers um, who are experts in their field in fragrance. We uh, love to hear about their backgrounds. We love to hear about their journey, uh, what are their current projects. And we also love to hear about some of their um, inspired scent moments. So I'm really excited for this scent fluence sit down with this influence or my friend and colleague, Ruth Sutcliffe of the Scent Guru Group. Hi, Ruth. Hi, how are you? I'm nice good, I'm good. Yeah. And happy birthday to you yesterday. Oh, thanks, it was great, it was great. Um, uh, I, will, I, will not, uh, I will not sing because I don't want to send anyone off the Zoom, but happy birthday. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you, and thanks, Kathy, you're, you're joining us. Kathy and I used to work with each other years ago, so welcome. Welcome, and, Kathy, uh, hi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a long time no see. I know. Okay, so so we're um, you know as as you know I've I've um, I'm a fragrance developer and I've been in the industry for quite a few decades and I've recently just gotten hired at a smaller you know Atlanta based fragrance company uh, doing what I love to do and that's uh, developing fragrances for uh, various end uses but. You know, I've had a, a wonderful career in development at uh, companies like IFF, uh, you know, many years at Cody, several years at Claire also. I basically have, you know, fragrance development experience in almost every end use that's out there, including kitty litter and, and carpet fresheners. And, and, and actually, I, and I love it. I love working on those types of projects just as much as I love working on, on perfumes. Um, and then, um, actually, when I had a hiatus uh, from the mainstream of the industry, I developed uh, smell and memory kits for people living with dementia, um, basically because my mother had dementia and my mother has Alzheimer's and I wanted to create an activity and a smelling kit for the program directors to uh, lead uh, their seniors uh, in the residence and an activity that would help stimulate their sense of smell as well as recall memories through these various uh, distinctive scent prompts such as the smell of grass, chocolate, you know, um, cinnamon, mint, uh, and so on. That's amazing. And I'm so excited here at the Scent Fluent Studio. When we opened, practically, we started to carry your uh, incredible uh, kits. And they were terrific in the holiday season because they were great gift items, particularly during COVID where we were locked down. So you're, you're new to Atlanta there, right? You just moved? I just moved uh, last month, but I'm maintaining my, my little business. I come home at the end of the day and from seven to 10, I'm usually working. That's, a, that's amazing. That's amazing. I do my social media because that's when you're so supposed to do social media anyway. Anyway, right? Those are the rules. Yeah. Do, it, do it in the evening when there's downtime. Yeah. But you know, coming, coming back to the to the kit. Oh, we have another visitor, Michelle Harper's coming in. That's exciting, oh, right? So, so Ruth, just just take us back for a minute. Um, so you had this great career in the in the in the fragrance industry, working on the, all these amazing projects, and then unfortunately, your mother became ill. And what did you notice about scent with your mom's illness? And then. Talk to us about that journey of inspiration to how you actually created these mindset and essential awakenings kits, mm -hmm. because behind the scenes, you shared with me how many parts and pieces these kits have, how challenging it was to pull this all together. Uh, love, to, love to hear the backstory of all of that as well. So take us back to your, to your mother and yeah. how Scent was able to help her. Well, so Scent, um, you know, if you have a parent or someone who uh, you know is very close to you who has dementia or Alzheimer's, you you know uh, often you do research on the uh, you know the disease, and so I did learn also while reading uh, that 
you know, the sense of smell as we age anyway, it, it, it becomes reduced, right? But when you have Alzheimer's, I read that it's an early indication, you know, when you lose your sense of smell or when you start losing, it could be an indication of Alzheimer's. And so, you know, even living with my mother-in-law who has Alzheimer's, um, I started, you know, experimenting with her a little bit by, you know, taking my work home and asking her, you know, can you smell this? You know, what do you smell? And she couldn't smell anything. Uh, my mother uh, could, but I noticed that she didn't want to eat as much. And so, you know, we all know that the sense of smell and the sense of taste is very connected. Um, and it's connected to emotion, as, as we know. And, and so my mother um, stopped, didn't want to really eat. There was a time where she just didn't want to eat. And I realized that she probably doesn't want to eat because she can't smell it. She can't smell. So, you know, her also her sense of taste is reduced. The only thing that both my mother and my mother-in-law wanted to eat were sweet or salty things. Mm, and so, more so right, and they didn't want to eat and you you know and that's one of the um gerontologists say that that's one of the really big issues with the elderly people is that they stop eating and then they become you know malnourished and so malnutrition and start is some of them starve to death because they just don't they don't eat when you don't eat you don't get your vitamins your proteins then you you know you know, you start losing uh, weight, you start losing your muscle mass, you, you know, you, you can't uh, keep your body up, right? Um, so, um, and I realized also going to see my mother in assisted living communities that there weren't any activities that involved the stimulation of the sense of smell. There were physical activities of bouncing the ball, uh, they would, uh, you know, play bingo games um, and and a few other activities, but there wasn't anything that involved the sense of smell. And so I thought, wow, if my one of my initial thoughts is if I could help stimulate the sense of smell, perhaps that could stimulate their appetite. Mm, okay. Right? So I, you know, I, I know someone who is an epidemiologist and I asked him, you know, this is years ago, 2015, you know, are there any studies about this? And he couldn't find anything at the time. And so I started after my mother passed away, I just made it my goal to, to try to help improve the lives of seniors uh, in memory care uh, by, by developing these smell prompts. So the distinctive smells such as the smell of grass that could take the, you know, smells that would resonate with the general population. So the smell of grass, the smell of popcorn, smell of chocolate, mint, cinnamon. You know, when you think about cinnamon, you think about the holidays. So baking pies or around, uh, you know, Halloween or Thanksgiving, you have these, uh, you know, you dip the apples in the cinnamon, right? You know. Uh, for mint, it would, could be mint in iced tea or mint gardens. If you are from the south of Kentucky, then it's, you know, mint juleps, mint right? Mint juleps, right. So I really did a huge thought process. You know, it was very, very deep on what smells would resonate the most. And I started going into assisted living communities up in the Northeast and giving these essential awakenings activities. And I realized, wow, you know, they are... When, when we talk about uh, scent, they open up. So it's like they start telling stories. Oh, oh, when I was, when I had a house, I used to have a lilac bush outside my house. So one florist said, I used to use lilac and bouquets, you know, uh, in my, so, you know, they go back into their memories and they share stories. So that was what, when the light went on, I thought, wow, if it, can help these seniors with dementia tell stories and communicate with each other, wanna, you know, share stories with each other, which often doesn't happen in these homes. They, you know, the communities, it's a, uh, there's not a lot of engagement, social engagement like that. So, you know, I realized if it helped them, how would it help, could scent help children who are shy, who have, you know, maybe low self-esteem, who have autism and are afraid to talk or can't talk or don't know how to express themselves. And that's how Mindscent uh, came to be is uh, I started, you know, going into an autism center and, and sitting with children of various levels of autism. So mm -hmm. that's kind of, you know, in a nutshell. 
Right. I, I think you have the, the kits right there. Can you show us the essential awakenings and just show us um, how did you put that right. together and how does it actually all work? Right. So essential awakenings is, is just like this. Um, so, you know, every kit and there's two, the first edition and then the second edition like that. Um, I wanted them very clean uh, looking, you know, uh, not therapeutical, but clean and simple. Uh, nothing flashy because this is this is a, a serious product. It's, they're not perfumes, even though they're very safe for the skin. And I wanted them in roller balls instead of sprays or or little bottles. So each one of these roller balls, you know, um, and the reason why roller balls they're they're easy to put onto the little scent scent strips, you know, that we see in the malls and such little paper strips because when you're working with a group of let's say I had 25 in one of uh, in a few of my groups so it's a lot of people to have in one you know group session but you want to be as hygienic as possible and obviously with COVID now after COVID you, you really have to be high you know be concerned about hygiene so with roller balls it's very hygienic uh, you know and they're each person in this you know in the seating gets a scent strip and they smell and I ask them to try to describe, you know, the whole effort is to try to get them to talk, to try to, um, I don't tell them what it is. I want them to try to use their minds to describe what they're smelling. Mm. And then I'll say, you know, is it a floor? Do you think it's a floor or do you think it's a fruit? Is it fresh? Is it clean? Is it sweet? And, um, and then we go from there and then I start giving them clues. So like, let's say for the smell of apple, th these are little clue cards. So I'll say, well, okay, here's some clues. Eating one a day keeps the doctor away. Right away they go, oh, that's an apple. <laughs> it's great in a pie. And then what happens uh, when they guess what it is, we talk and we talk about apple pies or tell me a story about apples. What kind of apple do you like? And a lot of people say, well, I like the green ones or I prefer Macintosh or, yeah, and so that's how you get the these um, people, the elderly, the seniors with dementia, to try, you know, to speak, to socialize, to converse, and share stories. And so that's, um, you know, that was that was a big undertaking, you know, and it was kind of it was courageous because nobody else was really doing um, this sort of. Uh, uh, nobody had this kind of product on the market, and. You know, in some assisted living communities, they would say, oh, yeah, we're, we're smelling aromatherapy, but you know as well as I, being in the business, aromatherapy is totally different. Even though what I am doing is aroma therapy, mm -hmm. not two words together. Because mm -hmm. I'm not making claims that this is going to make you feel calm or, you know, stimulate it, even though it does help stimulate the sense of smell. Um, mindset was a huge undertaking because... It has all these parts. If you think about it, it's over 200 components I had to source. And so again, you know, thinking about children, not just children with autism, but what about children who are isolated? Um, children who don't know what the smell of a rose is. Or, you know, so it's an educational toolkit as well. So there's 20, 20 of these smell prompts as well. This is the smell of donuts. I had to add some of these in that, you know, I mean, love donuts, right? <laughs> um, but the thought was, what are, what's going to get these kids to start talking and sharing stories and expressing themselves? And so going into this autism center down in Brooklyn, I would give you know, there would be usually about four children in the room with me and the educational director, of course. And I would give each of them, you know, a little blotter strip. This is in a packet. There's a hundred of these in there. And I would put the, um, let's say it's donuts. I would put the donut smell on the blotters and I, I would ask them also to, you know, try to smell and describe. But what they really enjoyed doing was a multiple choice. So I would give them the smell and then I would say, okay, is it this, which is campfire, or is it this, donuts? And, and they would say, they would point, it's donuts. Well, which donut is it? Is it the chocolate one, a glazed one, or a sugared one? And, you know, they would all have their own opinions 
um, but uh, it's, it's actually more like the sugar donuts, not really a chocolate <laughs> donut, but they, they usually get it. And then they'll start talking about on Saturday morning, my dad takes me to Dunkin' Donuts and we get my favorite donut. So, you know, that's an example of how these children start opening up and telling their own stories, sharing with each other what they do. Uh, you know, chocolate yeah. ice, whether it's chocolate, you know, I have the smell of chocolate. Everybody loves that. You know, the smell of roses. Some, some children don't know what rose smells like. So this is also a chance, like I said, to get them to, to uh, smell rose, the true scent of a rose, right? And um, so with each smell prompt, there are, you know, these, these clue, clue cards as well as fact cards. And I try to, you know, uh, put as many interesting facts as possible. Um, so that would teach them. So let's say for campfire, and it's a wonderful, the campfire smell is great. Um, it is a great one, yes. Yeah. So for the fact card, it's like the first known campfire to have been built was 1.6 million years ago in South Africa by a caveman, you know, by the caveman. Campfires are popular techniques for cooking hot dogs, marshmallows, and so that's a fun fact. But then here's a fact that is for learning. Never leave a campfire unattended and always make sure safety measures are followed with water and a shovel nearby. So, you know, it's an educational kind of toolkit as well as, you know, fun facts. And they love reading these. So, you know, after they, we talk about the scent, I'll say, okay, I'll turn over the card and say, would you like to read a fact to us? And they usually start with the first fact and then they just keep going. And so it's, it's a very empowering kind of uh, tool for SLP, speech language pathologists to use as well as, um, you know, uh, educators and parents also, you know, during the pandemic, uh, uh, the parents could use these at home because everybody, in fact, uh, you know, families with people who have uh, dementia, if they had their parent at home, it was an additional activity for them to be able to, to have uh, with their loved ones right. that is fun for the entire family. Absolutely. In, in fact, speaking of like case studies and experiences, can you share with us how your work with the Essential Awakenings mindset, how it really has helped in a, in a real life situation, a story for us maybe? Uh, one story that was very emotional for me uh, came from a man uh, at the Senior Center in Greenwich, Connecticut. And um, his name was Tim Huff. Unfortunately, he, he did pass away during the pandemic uh, from complications. Uh, but he told us in the smelling session in 2019 that um, his sense of smell saved his life in Vietnam. And so I, you know, and it was the first session that he sat in with us and I asked him to share his story. And he said that when he was in Vietnam that he was on the floor of the jungle and he smelled fish and garlic. And, and I said, yeah, I guess that does make sense because fish was not part of the American soldier's diet at the time, right? We were, our soldiers were eating you know, out of cans and they were mm -hmm. eating crackers and, you know, other foods that weren't fish, fresh fish or garlic, really. So when he smelled that in the air, he knew that the enemy was nearby. And so that saved his life. He, he said, it saved my life. And so you think about that, you know, if you can't smell the gas stove, if you cannot smell you know, let's say gasoline, somebody who I know just recently who had lost his sense of smell um, works with boats. And he says, you know, when I'm filling up the boat with gasoline, I can't smell it. And, you know, if you think about that, it's, it can be extremely dangerous if you can't smell, if you do not uh, pay attention to smell. So that, that particular story has stuck with me. And then there's other stories that have been, you know, a lot of fun, you know, just fun stories that, that shows the true character and the person that's in the room, such <laughs> as uh, the smell of um, chocolate when one man who was also, you know, most of the sessions with the elderly people are women. And the men are a little shy to join at first, but then they, you know, they come in and they, and they have a really great time. But this one particular guy had obviously was a, had a great sense of humor and he came in the session one day and I was showing the smell of chocolate and he said, I want to date the woman who's wearing this. And it was just so funny. It just, 
for him to just like make it, you know, to, 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 to bring this part of his character out was just hilarious. And then he said, you know, when I was young, I dated a celebrity. And I said, well, tell us about the celebrity. You know, that's very interesting. And he, he says, um, he said, and this totally went over my head because I can be very gullible sometimes. He says, her name was Barbara Hershey. And it was like, I, I was like, oh, Barbara Hershey. She was in that movie Beaches and, you know, with, with Ben Midler. And then I realized, you know, he's really telling a joke because we're smelling chocolate. He's pulling your leg. But what a sharp yeah. mind to yeah, connect the dots. He was very, you know, but, but he, he totally enjoyed uh, that smelling session and, and, um, and, gay, and joked all along with it. So it showed his humor because he was in a wheelchair and he wasn't really uh, very keen on joining us. And he, I finally lured him into the circle. Ah, oh, let's see what scent did to bring him out of his shell, right? And, and speaking of, you know, um, what scent can do, what about some of your own memories of scent? And how does scent, where does scent take you, your favorite aromas? Where do, you, where do they transport you to? Oh, my scent memory, oh boy. Um, I, you know, I'm gonna tell just a little story about when I was first started working in the fragrance industry. I worked for a company that was a global company, it doesn't exist anymore, it was eventually bought by Givadon, but I was a trainee and uh, they said, okay, your first task is to go into the product closet and clean out the product closet. And so the product closet, you know, global company, so they had, uh, detergents from all over the world and um, it was like my adventure you know through scent uh, throughout the world so you know the detergents from Germany and then there were some Venezuela and South and you know you know being the in, in the industry and working with these you know if for anybody else who's worked with household you know in the in the Philippines they have different types of detergent you know uh, uh, let's say formulations versus Germany and different kinds of tastes and fragrance. So it, for me, it was like, wow, I'm exploring the world through smell. <laughs> some countries, you know, that fragrance over there from Germany smells like that one over there. And, you know, that's when I really started learning about smells from all around the world and started appreciating um, the products from various parts of the world. But, you know, that's one really important memory that I have. Um, that's kind of, I was able to go away. <laughs> um, another really wonderful memory I have is when I was um, at IFF developing win the Windex Blue, what's still on the market. Oh, wow. And we had this, yeah, we had this wonderful perfumer I worked with on the SC Johnson product uh, project, and his name was Murray Moscone. I think he's retired, but... Um, he gave me this fragrance. And you know, SC Johnson, like all the very large companies, have very specific ways you have to evaluate the fragrance. And the goal for any evaluator, um, uh, perfumer evaluator, is to, is to really help uh, make the task of cleaning better. Or if you're wearing a perfume, it's to help you feel safer or um, invigorated, you know, uh, romantic, whatever. So it, there's a lot of emotion tied to this. So the emotion that's tied to Windex is, uh, you know, the overall goal is to make the task of cleaning windows much nicer for the housewife or whoever's doing the cleaning. So I remember getting this fragrance from Mr. Moscona and wiping down the glass. It was a 12 by 12 glass and thinking, wow, this is really <laughs> this is really fun and uh and and we won the project and it's still out on the market and this fragrance has been out there since um oh. you know i'm never gonna think of windex the same way again i use a ton of windex we have glass all over the studio here i'm always windexing <laughs> which one the blue one the blue one yeah hey. and you're the you're the woman behind the windex <laughs> all the glass. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So that, those are some of the really good scent memories. A personal scent memory, obviously, that I'll share is, um, is when I was raised on a farm and my mother uh, made all the jams and jellies. You know, we froze the vegetables for, you know, we were a sustainable farm. So we, you know, a huge vegetable farm and we had fruit trees. And so we, we, every summer we picked the apples and the pears and the peaches and, and my, 
most vivid set memory from my youth was helping my mother with all my other siblings make peach jam. Mm. And so the farm kitchen would smell of peaches and it was just mm. such a wonderful smell. And of course, we all used to fight about who gets to uh, clean the pits. So, you know, we'd suck off the, the peach uh, meat from the, the, the uh, seed and then throw away the seed. And it, that was a really special experience. Even when you peel, the the skin off the peach it's a it's a very specific uh scent mm. that comes with that i'm actually right there now with you in that kitchen smelling that peach and now i need to go buy one <laughs> need to ha have a taste yeah the, again the connection yeah. between the, <laughs> yeah the scent and the the um the taste and then right. yeah amazing and um you know speaking of the importance of the sense of smell now that we're uh trying to reemerge progressively from the pandemic you know scent has been very important during the pandemic i think people being at home have really gained a new appreciation for it how do you feel that scent will help us to reemerge what do you think the role of scent will be uh for the future well, it depends on what, what scent, what end use, but I have to say that when I first, when the pandemic first started, I wasn't wearing fragrance. I'm like, why? I'm not going anywhere. And there was a certain point where I've, I'm going to start wearing fragrance again. You know, um, I wanted something that was very comforting because, you know, up in the Northeast, as you know, we were, we were slammed and, um, so many people dying and, and it was, um, you know, I, was uh, we were all in fear, right? Living in fear. And so when you're living in fear uh, and living in a very, very sad time, scent can help pick you up, right? Mm -hmm. So I started wearing some very comforting fragrances or some of the fragrances that I've always worn, some of the classics such as, you know, the Vetiver from Guerlain, I've always loved. Uh, Tom Ford has a metallique fragrance that is very comforting. It's almost like, you know, in the wintertime, I spray it on the, you know, my cow neck sweater, my turtle, and it was, I'd smell it all day long, and it would just made me feel so comfortable. Mm. And, you know, when, when spring started coming, I started spritzing the, you know, Mandarin fragrance from uh, Frederick Mal, and a friend of mine over in Italy has something called Mantra and it's very invigorating, but also comforting at the same time and refreshing. And so I started really um, exploring just, okay, what kind of feeling do I have today? You know, what, what am I, what's appropriate for today? How do I, you know, um, how do I want to smell? But, you know, as we're sitting, we were sitting in our houses, of course, they, we were cleaning like maniacs, right? So I started really realizing, okay, you know, this smell in this product is really kind of cool. I like this product because it smells clean. You know, you just started mm -hmm. like really paying much more attention to smells. When it comes to people who have lost their sense of smell because of COVID, you know, and that's how I had to, um, I, I really panicked back in March and April of last year thinking, oh my gosh, the seniors are locked up in their rooms, right? Uh, there were no activities. They, you know, so many deaths yeah. in assisted living communities, not not just assisted living communities, the elderly population in general was getting highly uh, affected. And then the children with disabilities, they were also, you know, um, in serious lockdown. So the kits had to be repurposed in some way. And, you know, I realized that a couple of years ago, uh, one of my friends from Cody, had four aneurysms after running marathons. And I, I sent her a kit. I said, you know, try it. You know, if it could help stimulate that sense of smell, help bring your memory of that scent back. And she used them and it, and it was, and it helped after five months, she was able to get her sense of smell back. So when COVID happened and I started reading about people losing their sense of smell from the virus, um, I, I reached out to Rachel Hers, Dr. Hers, who's a, uh, she's a well-known neuroscientist in the flavor and fragrance business. Yeah. And I called her up because, you know, I had met her several times before and I asked her if she would, you know, if, if she would develop a smell training guide for me. And I had already heard about Absent, you know, over in the UK and Dr. Hummel, who has done uh, a lot of research and smell training. And I started reading about them and and I realized, you know, we really don't have something like that in the United States. What I'm doing, you know, what 
what they, they have advocated is the rose and clove and eucalyptus and one other essential oil. And my kits are distinctive smells, the smell of grass, the smell, you know, the, the, the original purpose was to help recall memories through the sense of smell. So I repurposed my kits for people who, who needed smell training um, after Dr. Herz developed this smell training guide for me. Oh, wonderful. And, and Dr. Hertz, and, and you both are part of our, our uh, scent marketing expert panel. And uh, you're both yeah. you're on our website. So it's I saw her with you uh, for the FGI, right? Yes, yes. she right. was uh, on the honor and, panel. She's amazing. And people really, you know, smell training takes months sometimes. You know, it doesn't, and you have to take it very seriously. So while, while you know, COVID um, is still you know, afflicting a lot, you know, quite a few people and still many people have lost their sense of smell and can't get them back. You know, the scientists are advocating smell training. So, you know, the kits are being used for smell training. And, and I've had some very, very nice uh, feedback uh, from my customers. Wonderful. Well, it's so great to see you with this wonderful new company in Atlanta. We love the company you're working with. My, some of my colleagues are here. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And, um, the, and the company has been was such a great supporter of Scent World in the past. And we've um, also collaborated on some panels as well. So it's really, I'm very excited for you. And, um, and great that you're, you know, getting the opportunity still to uh, keep a hand into your uh, your own business with this really important work with uh, the mindset and the essential awakenings. I know how much energy and effort you put into, sorry, a little background noise, um, into creating those kits. That's a tremendous amount of work, a lot of detail and research and, uh, and congratulations to you for that. And uh, I love having them here in the studio as uh, uh, we're able to host events. I look forward to using them as a way to do in-person events to stimulate conversation and exchanges, interaction with people. And um, when, you're, when you're back East, if you come back for a visit, come in and we'll, we'll do something here live together. Yes, I would love to. I would love to. And we, uh, you know, to reach out to families as well as, um, you know, speech pathologists uh, and such. And, you know, it, it, uh, it could be a, a fun, interactive kind of event. You know, I'll be back. Um, I plan on coming back once a month. So uh, the next time I'm back, if we can have something on a Saturday, that would be great. Would yeah, be let's do that. That would be wonderful. Well, gosh, um, thank you so much for joining us this evening, everyone. And uh, so great, Ruth, that you could take some time out to sit down with us here at the Scentfluence studio and share your wonderful background, your life journey, and your, um, your current status. Very excited for you of uh, what will lie, lie ahead. And we'll, we'll do this again soon. Do, does anybody have any questions? Uh, I was just... Um... Yeah, you know, we can take any questions, maybe. Sure. If anybody has one. Of course, Please, I'll be visiting your office to talk to you more about it. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy? I, just, I have Kathy? a thought about, um, about this, Ruby, and it's so good to see you. Oh, I'm so excited for you. This is great. And I wish I had had um, that kit when my mother was, she, she passed away at 96, but she, she didn't have any dementia. She was actually sharp as a tack, but... It helped, things like that helped me. I started writing, I started asking her prompt questions to get her life story. But I think this could have also been a really helpful tool because she struggled with some of the memories, but smell is such a quick pathway to memories. Yeah. I remember my first week at Clairol and Allison Rubley had an old Clairol lipstick. Do you remember Slicker? <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't. Maybe it was it was way before your time, probably. But anyway, I smelled it, and I went right back to my fifteen-year-old self, teenage self, um, when I wore that lipstick. You know, the the big date that I went on. I mean, it <laughs> triggered so many memories. I was like, I was shocked that that happened. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> it's 
instantaneous. Smell. It's instantaneous and it's emotional. So, you know, Absolutely. the sense of smell is connected to emotions. Is you know, all, it's very well known, you know, the scientists who are talking about the sense of smell, such as Dr. Hers, it's a, it's, it is, it, when you smell something, you know, it brings back memories quicker than any other sense that we have. Absolutely. And I, I do a little um, uh, writing and um, with a professional storyteller. And we do word prompts, but I think smell prompts is also something that we should consider. So um, I'm so happy to hear what you're doing. For sure. You know, when I used to go into the senior center in Greenwich or anywhere, you know, I've been at Atria's and Brookdale's and Sunrise's and, you know, smaller smaller uh, assisted living communities. But I, I do story time, like especially for holiday. Yeah. Uh, you could take, you know, I talk about when I was young and I used to go into the woods with my father and my my siblings and we cut down our Christmas tree and then I'd show the smell of pine. And then yes. we'd take it back into this, you know, back to the house and we'd put it into the stand and we'd make popcorn because, you know, so many people, when I tell the story about making popcorn and stringing it with a thread, a needle and thread, they say, we used to do that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And my mother used to always bake a ham. And on top of that ham was the pineapple. So I have the smell of pineapple in here. And you know, if you were raised on Betty Crocker, Betty Crocker had the pineapple with the cherry inside. <laughs> 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 and some people say, I still do that. So yeah, you know, it's, uh, and that was why I said earlier, the thought process of, okay, what fragrances should I select? you know, for these kits. It has to be fragrances that resonate with people of certain age, really. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. So to your, to your, um, your thought there, storytelling, you know, these kits have been used for storytelling by an advertising agency a couple of years ago when they had some kind of conference and they were talking about storytelling mm. and they bought one of my kits to use for the storytelling. So, you know, um, it's, it's perfect, actually. Mm -hmm. It helps to inspire creativity. So I think it'd be great to use the scent cue to inspire the words and the creativity and therefore the emotions. It's a great, right. great thought. Right. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you.